Hey everybody, this is Spencer from True Tine Outdoors again coming to you with another e scouting video. Today I'm going to be talking to you about mule deer at the start of September, one of our favorite times to hunt mule deer. Before I get into the details of the area, I'll just give you a broad aspect of it. It's going to be in the Alpine obviously because that's the summer range for mule deer. What I'm going to explain to you is how I would go about in my own way of doing a backcountry hunt in this specific spot. Everything from camp to water to glassing knobs. For e-scouting specifically I use the iHunter app and I use the base layer Mapbox satellite which has a 3D option on it for you to get different aspects of the terrain. In this video, I will be turning on the GeoGratis layer in order to look in depth in the terrain and find different drainages that we will need to hone in on in order to constantly get water while we're in the backcountry. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. The area is an alpine, high mountain area in British Columbia. Uh, one thing to note about this area is it has slashes around the Alpine so that you can get access into the Alpine. And another note is that it's not completely slashed out, which I really like about this spot. When it's really slashed out, there's a good chance that there's more human traffic in the area there's less animals because you're cutting out habitat. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but the whole east side of this area is not slashed at all. That's this whole spot right here, which I think is pretty awesome. Another thing about an area like this is that there's multiple spots to actually hunt in this area, right? There's multiple faces of Alpine that you can go into, kind of like over here, kind of like over here. And then you've got over here, uh, which is great because if one falls through, you can go to the next. One thing I also want to say is that this is just a general aspect e-scout of the spot. There's a lot you can do before you actually go into a spot for mule deer in September like this. One thing that I would say is a really good idea is to pre-scout it in the summer before you actually go in at the start of September. If you can get in for a weekend, it always gives you an upper hand, so keep that in mind. Now that we've gone over our area and what it's about, let's dig right into the zone that we're going in to hunt. This is the zone, this is the mountain that we are going to hunt. So it's kind of like this alpine saddle. So like the saddle's kind of like right in here. And then you have these two ridges, one on this side and one on this side, which is really cool. It kind of gives you different aspects of the Alpine when you're going in to hunt it and when you're actually hunting the zone. So yeah, that's the basic breakdown of the zone. We have our ridges, right? Like we went over, it's kind of a high point on this side, a high point on this side over here. And then we've got little faces down in here looks really nice that you can glass down into. We've went over the zone, but the biggest thing to cover is the hunt in this. And the hunt is a backcountry hunt, so we need to break it down from the start. So we get there, it's Saturday. We took off Monday and Tuesday of our day jobs so that we can hunt the rest of Saturday, all day Sunday, all day Monday, and then come home mid morning on the Tuesday. So let's look at this. And what we'll do now is we'll point out areas that we want to glass where we think we'll find deer coming in and feeding in these alpine zones. I'm going to start with this one over here because I really like this and I think that this could have potential 
the green outlined areas are going to be our mule deer zones. This is where we're expecting to see animals. This is where we're glassing towards, okay? Now everything can change when you're in the field, but we're basing it off of what we feel where these deer are gonna come in and feed on these open faces. I really like this. Seems like a spot that'll have a bunch of feet in there. Okay. So we've got those three spots to start. I'm going to venture away from the zone a little bit here. I like this area as well. I'm going to mark it just due to the fact that who knows a lot can change during the hunt. And you might say, okay, let's push over to that ridge. I'll mark this as well. It's kind of all here. And you can see a little more green up there around those trees, right? I would say it even kind of comes into this. We can extend this into this could be a focus glassing spot as well. We have some spots picked out now. We don't know what's going to happen when we go there, but we've got some areas that we're going to focus and hone in on while we're there with the glass. So our next thing is to find advantages for these spots. I'll start with the first one over here. And this one's pretty easy to find advantage because there's a high ridge right on the other side. Let's pick right there. Yes, I love that. It's not overly far for a stock and it kind of keeps you out of the area, that specific area. I really like that ridge. I like that glassing spot. I like that face. It's really mellow, that slope. Yeah, that's nice. You know, it's funny, uh, before I made this video, I found this spot and I was thinking to myself, oh, I was like, do I show this one? Ah, like, okay, I'll show this one. I do actually want to go here one day, but that's okay. I'll still show this. So now that we have that, let's move over and let's go to the second one that we did. And this one's pretty straightforward. Um, you're basically going to be able to glass anywhere off this ridge there. Man, that's hard. There's really not a lot of vantage to glass in on that. But you know what? Could say that there might be a spot like right there. And you could glass down into this. One thing that's nice about that is it's super close. Like you're glassing within... 700 yards which means that your stock is doesn't have to be super far if something comes out at that range let's see can we glass the other way oh yeah look at that that's a beauty right there let's say we're on this knob this little outcrop okay let's see how far we can glass there and what we can glass from this spot we're going to have a big field of view like we can kind of see throughout this whole thing right
So yeah, you'll be able to see down or oh, you'll be able to see a little bit over here. Not too much, but you'll still be able to see a bit over there. Now well, let's go check out this. We might be able to hike through this spot instead of glass it. Like kind of treat it like still hunting through this spot, slowly creeping. Come through these openings, work your way, just kind of zigzag through and then work your way back along here, kind of drop down and then come back up. Doesn't look like a bad spot. It's always something worth trying if you're not seeing stuff and while you're glassing. Probably in country like this and you're hunting mule deer, stay put. I make the mistake a lot of getting too antsy and wanting to move. And I think that it really hinders my success in a lot of different ways because I could have missed something. As I'm hunting more and learning more, I notice that myself in particular, I start to sit for longer and I'm actually picking up more animals because of it. So it's, it's one really big thing to think about. Okay, we've got this spot over here. Yeah, this is pretty interesting. I would say that I would just stay high along the ridge. Then I'd be looking down while I stay high, just kind of keeping my head on a swivel. It's not a lot of spots you can sit in glass there. You might find like little knobs to sit on um, and you might have like little lanes that you can sit on. Uh, other than that, you, you don't have like a broad face to glass for. Okay, so now that we've got our little pockets picked out and our vantage points picked out in this spot, let's think about how we're gonna start our hunt. Where's our access? We've got a slash over here, the road coming into it. Let's say we park here we hike up, we come along this ridge, and we stop right there. So it's roughly three kilometers to the top of that ridge in that zone. Now let's look in specific for a camp spot. So I'm going to put camp right there, but bearing in mind that on our hike in, we're going to be looking for spots to camp just in case, like we're, we're always going to be thinking ahead, right? We might find something lower down on that ridge where it's just easier to camp there. And it's better spot because we're kind of out of the area. We're not spooking anything while we're coming in or we're camping like right on top of the ridge. Um, we're pretty close to the zones that we want to hunt, right? So that's something to keep in mind. Let's take a little distance measure here. 230 meters. That's not very far to like that tip of that zone. And then down over here, right, it's not very far. You're only 540 meters. So after looking at this, we probably won't camp there, but we'll keep that camp spot labeled there. And let's go back and take a look in along here. You know, we might be able to park bench right on this ridge I know it's within the trees and you don't have a lot of sight and you're in bear country, but something to consider when you're parking bench there is that if you're in the timber, kind of masks smell, masks sound, all these sort of things come into play when you're in mule deer country, right? Everything like that. We got two potential camp spots. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna turn on the GeoGratis layer so that we can see where there's possible drainages, how close they are to these two camp spots so that we can tell how far we need to go from camp to get water. OK, 
Okay, we got water down there. Potential of water down on the backside there. Let's check this right here for water. Let's see how far it is to go down there. Five hundred meters. That is a perfect distance. And if there's nothing pooled in there, which it, there probably is something pooled in there, you can go a little bit farther along that drainage that we got pinned. And if you don't find any water there, well, then you can drop right down to this, which is just a little bit farther, hundred meters more. Um, and you have potential finding water in there. It's just things to keep in mind. And then if you don't find water there, you can drop down off of this, which is super steep, but it's worth a check if you're not finding water and you can get to there. So three close distances off of that one camp spot. Another thing to think about is while you're hiking in, look for water, look for water here and there while you're hiking in it's really important water is like such a crucial aspect of backcountry hunting and it needs to not go by the wayside it's really important okay so if we're camped there then we need to think about the way we're hunting this and the way we're coming into our glassing knobs what i would do is i'm gonna hike from camp, along the ridge, down here, down to the first knob here. Then I'm gonna glass. I'm gonna glass for a long time and wait for a long time. This is gonna be your longest glassing point to glass from. You might not see something in the morning. You might not see something at night, but you might see something the next day in the morning. You don't wanna push spots like crazy right? Like you want to just kind of, okay, that's where we're going to glass from. Let's get to that point and let's plunk. And we don't move because the more movement, the more disturbance, the more you drag your scent through these certain spots. I think about all these things while I'm out in the field hunting mule deer. I think this is a really good thing to think about without going into depth anymore about stalking in on an animal or anything like that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to review the aspect of this whole hunt. I think this gives a good base and logistically it's not a far hike in. It's a doable hunt in those short amount of days, a hundred percent. But if you go in earlier, you give yourself the upper hand to find if there are mule deer in that spot. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off the Geogratis. Let's review what we went over. Uh, we've got the area. The area is this spot. It's got Alpine. It's got slashes nearby for access. It's got more Alpine zones really tight so that you can always jump from spot to spot. Remember when you're finding mule deer, it might take you three ridges. That is our area. And one thing I really like about this area is that there's so much untouched timber nearby this Alpine. Okay. It's really something to consider. A lot of that area is undisturbed. Very good thing to think about. The next thing we went over was the zone so the zone we're hunting is this right here this zone has a ridge on either side or a high point with kind of a saddle that goes in between these two ridges it has a face on the back side that you can glass from the back of that ridge both these ridges you can glass from down into the saddle. You have other ridges to glass from to glass these different faces that are close 
to our focus zone. You got backside faces that you can hike through to check for deer. Both sides. After that, we talked about the hunt. Okay, first we talked about our approach up to our camp. We gave ourselves two camp locations just in case. We kind of deciphered already that we're going to go short with the first camp because it's closer to three sources of potential water while we're up on that ridge. And then after we talked about that, we talked about our hunting strategy. And our hunting strategy was to go to the first closest vantage point and sit for long periods of time and glass, glass, and glass. And then obviously, if we're not seeing anything at those points, then we're getting up and we're moving and we're gonna glass different spots. I'm just gonna add in a quick thing from this glassing knob, I would move over to this glassing knob next as it's the closest to glass from. And then let's say you go up, you go back for the night and you're back at camp then I'm coming over to this if that's your next focus spot to glass from. Well, after everything we went over, this was backcountry mule deer at the start of September, maybe with a bow. Okay, what's our number one thing? Boots on the ground beats it all. It always will. With that being said, let's touch on to that. Pre-scouting helps for a spot like this and for mule deer and specifically right before the season opens. If you can get in there, scout it out and go in there and try and find mule deer and act like you're hunting it. Don't go and willy nilly run around in there. Go camp, sneak up to the glassing spot, sit, watch and find them. And I just want to say thank you for watching this video. It has been a pleasure making these. I really enjoy doing it. And now that I'm on to mule deer, I think I've perked up a little bit about it because I love hunting mule deer. Good luck out there this season.